Gamer Subs just dropped a new flavor called Emotional Damage. Make sure to use code GM for 10% off. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gminers here. I've made a ton of resistance videos in the past, especially last season. And with it being more prevalent than ever, I wanted to make one final video going over everything that you should be stacking for the day one raid. There are chapters below so that you can skip around. I wanted to start with Artifice chess pieces, which I see a bunch of people using inefficiently. Most players tend to run something like Armor of the Dying Star in the first slot, the missing type of elemental mod in the second slot, and then another artifact mod in that bonus slot. The thought process is that you get resistance from all three main sources, but in most activities, enemies tend to be the same damage type. So what you should be doing is swapping this mod out for melee and sniper resist or concussive dampener. Concussive is probably the best option to go with unless you are dying a lot to close or ranged enemies specifically. This is going to stack the 25% resistance from the first two mods with another 15%, assuming both mods apply to the enemy type. A perfect example is something like a Hive Boomer that deals arc and splash damage. If both mods end up applying, this is going to get you up to 37% damage resistance rather than just the 25%. Resilience is obviously something you're going to want at tier 10 as well. This will be another 40% on top of the chess piece mods. And the most overpowered part of this is that 40% is always going to apply without any conditions. This will bring us up to a total of 62% resistance with tier 10 and three chess piece mods active. After this is where resistance sources tend to be a bit more difficult to stack on top of each other. I'm going to start by going over resistance sources I think are useless to use. Number one is Well of Tenacity. This is a 40% resistance, which I tested in this video. Bungie claims it is at 50%, but it isn't, and I haven't seen them address this being bugged or patch it in a hotfix. The reason this is useless is because you will most likely take more damage trying to collect an elemental well than this will end up helping you with, and it only lasts for a few seconds. Number two is Protective Light. This is just a 10% resistance, which is too small to use for one of your five mod slots. If you're running high energy fire, this can also burn through your charge with light stacks accidentally. Number three is the Land Tank Origin Traits. If you just so happen to be using a weapon with this perk, then it's great, but I wouldn't purposely force your loadout just for the extra resist it provides. Kills give 5% per stack, up to 15%, and this is also a super short duration. And then number four is the Omni Oculus. People oogle over this thing, but the only way the 50% resistance comes into play is if you pop smoke at the perfect time. If you go invis too late, you take the full damage anyways. If you go invis too early, then stuff stops aggroing you. Overall, if you just need invis for your team, Omni is great and the 50% helps. But the only way I see this as useful is if you know you're going to take a ton of damage while invis because of either the environment or ads shooting at teammates. Real quick, before I go over the best resistance sources to use, if you guys do enjoy the content, make sure to drop a like and sub down below. Subbing is completely free, it takes two seconds, and you can always unsub later. With that out of the way, here are the options I would recommend using. First up is the Stag. This gives everyone inside of your Rift 25% damage reduction. Combined with healing rifts, this is going to be great because you take less damage overall while replenishing health consistently. And you also get Rift Energy when critical, so more likely than not, if you end up needing a Rift, you're going to have one. After this is Warmind's Protection. This is going to be a 50% resistance in total from any enemies that are near Warmind cells. I think that Global Reach extends the range, but don't quote me on that. All you need to do is have this mod on and someone on your team to generate Warmind cells. This can be done with an Ikalos weapon, or if you don't want to force your loadout, you can always use Wrath of Rasputin, which is one energy. This lets solar splash damage create warmind cells as well. Even though this will force you one way or the other, like land tank does, doing it for 50% resistance is much more worth it in my eyes. And with half your team doing this, warmind cells will cover an arena. After this is Renewal's Grasp plus Whisper of Chains. Whisper of Chains is a 40% resistance while near a frozen enemy or a stasis crystal. Renewals are a base 25% resistance while allies are inside of the Dusk Field. And it's an additional 50% from enemies who damage you from inside the Dusk Field too. The second part just pretty much makes you immune to melee damage. But Renewals and the Touch of Winter Aspect pair super well together. This way you get the 25% from Renewals and the 40% from Whisper of Chains just from throwing one grenade. I think that is 
pretty much everything with the exception of arc 3.0 sources so let's go over those we don't know the values for these but there are two sources currently first is from the amplified buff and then second is from the spark of resistance fragment if you are a runner for any end game activity then amplified is going to come in clutch otherwise i think it's kind of useless I definitely wouldn't run arc just for this damage resistance because if you are holding a plate or something similar it's probably not going to come into play very often and then for spark of resistance i think this is going to be great you obviously won't want it to stay proc for a while because that means you're surrounded by enemies so you will probably die but having it for tight situations and allowing you to play more aggressive will also be great and honestly depending on the percentage of reduction we get it could easily allow you to play up in the face of ads even 20 under when it comes to stacking, a Stasis Warlock with Stag near a Crystal or Frozen enemy and with Warmind's Protection nearby should get 92% damage reduction. This obviously includes Tier 10 Resilience and Max Chest Piece mods. Renewal Hunters will get the exact same benefit. But if you pair both together so that the Hunter can get damage resist from the Stag and the Warlock from Renewals, then this is going to go up to 94% resistance. When testing in the past, some items did also seem like they didn't stack fully together. So I don't think getting to 94% would be exactly where we end up with this, but it'd still be up there. I also don't think this is super realistic to keep permanently procced, but you can see just how insanely overtuned resistance stacking is. A much more realistic and sustainable combo would be tier 10 resilience, plus 25% from just two chest piece mods, a stag rift, and Warmind's protection if a good amount of players are generating these. This would be a total of 83% resistance still, 66% if we didn't even use Warmind's protection, which again, is still wild. And you can always change out Warmind's protection for something like Whisper of Chains on Stasis, Renewals if a Hunter is nearby, or even something like Spark of Resistance when that comes out and get nearly the same results. I just wanted to make this video so that everybody knew some of the better methods to use to take less damage. I'm definitely not an advocate for Bungie to keep making resistance sources this easy to stack, but if something is OP, I'm going to use it and other players who want to should as well. A lot of these values could change before the raid race on Friday, so do keep that in mind. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.